In this video, we are going to define the glomerular filtration rate and we will explain the determinants of GFR. Over here you can see a very simplified version of the Bowman's capsule and the renal tubules. And this is the afferent arteriole that is forming the capillary plexus called the glomerulus and the efferent arteriole. So what is happening that the fluid is being filtered from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And when we take it as per unit time, that is called as glomerular filtration rate. So GFR is defined as volume of fluid filtered from the plasma into the Bowman's capsule per unit time. And the GFR that is formed by all the nephrons of both kidneys is 125 milliliters per minute or 180 liters per day. So what are the determinants of GFR? These are the same as that of the capillary filtration that is the capillary filtration coefficient and net filtration pressure. So these are two very important determinants that are going to determine the GFR. As you all know that capillary filtration coefficient is dependent on the permeability or the porosity of the capillary that is also called as hydraulic conductivity. And the second important factor that contributes towards the capillary filtration coefficient is the surface area of the capillaries. So this filtration coefficient can be defined as a measure of the capacity of capillary membrane to filter water for a given net filtration pressure or it is a measure of the hydraulic conductivity and the surface area of the capillary membrane. The second important determinant is the net filtration pressure that is dependent on all the starting forces. So we will discuss or, and explain all these determinants one by one. The first important determinant is the filtration coefficient. So what happens when there is decrease in the filtration coefficient? This can happen whenever there is decrease in the surface area or decrease in permeability of the filtration barrier. So this can occur in cases of chronic diseases like diabetes, mellitus and hypertension in which there is fibrosis and thickening of this basement membrane leading to decrease in the surface area. Whenever there is decrease in the surface area or decrease in permeability across this membrane, this actually decreases the filtration coefficient and ultimately decreasing filtration across this barrier and decreasing the GFR. The next important determinant is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. This is the first starting force that is very important in determining the GFR. So this hydrostatic pressure is almost equal to 60 millimeters of mercury and this is forcing the fluid to move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So this is a pressure that is actually or this is a force that is actually favoring the filtration of fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. The second important starting force is called the glomerular collide osmotic pressure. This is contributed by the plasma proteins that are present inside these vessels. These plasma proteins remain inside the capillaries and are, and are not filtered into the Bowman's capsule. So this force only exists on this side of the membrane because these plasma proteins are not filtered into the Bowman's capsule. And the plasma, the glomerular collide osmotic pressure is a pressure that is actually exerting a suction force, meaning that this is a force that actually decreases the GFR or that does not favor the filtration of fluid from the capillaries into the glomerular basement membrane. It does not favor the filtration of fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So this is a force acting in the opposite direction. The third important starting force is the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure that actually forces the fluid to move from the Bowman's capsule into the glomerulus. So this is again a force that is opposing the filtration of fluid. So how to calculate the net filtration pressure? If we sum up these forces acting in one direction 
and subtract it from the force acting in the opposite direction then we can get the net filtration pressure that is around 10 millimeters of mercury so the fluid is actually moving from this direction to this direction there is net filtration of fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule we will now discuss one by one the various physiological and pathophysiological conditions that can alter these starting forces and ultimately can affect the GFR so the first condition is formation of venous stones so let's suppose if there is obstruction at the level of the Bowman's capsule that is if there is formation of the renal stones that obstruct the outflow of fluid out of the Bowman's capsule or from the renal tubules what it is going to cause it is actually going to cause accumulation of fluid into the Bowman's capsule and increase the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure so whenever the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure increases it opposes the filtration of substances from the glomerulus into the Bowman space thus there is decrease in GFR so whenever there is formation of renal stones there is always accumulation of fluid the urine is not filtered out of the kidneys and this develops back pressure or the development of back pressure then leads to dilatation of the renal tubules the ureter, the urine, the pelvis and the renal tubules uh, and this condition is called as hydronephrosis. We can see over here that there is dilatation of the ureter, there is dilatation of the renal pelvis over here as well and ultimately leading to degeneration of the nephrons and decrease in number of the functioning nephrons. So this condition is called as hydronephrosis. Whenever there is dilatation of the renal tubules, the renal pelvis, the ureter due to blockage of the ureter or renal stones. Okay, so over here you can see the normal renal blood flow. This is the normal renal blood flow. What happens if there is decrease in the renal blood flow? Whenever there is decrease in the renal blood flow, that leads to stagnation of or accumulation of the plasma proteins into this area whenever there is accumulation of plasma proteins the number of the plasma proteins is actually increasing this increase in plasma proteins leads to increase in glomerular colloidal osmotic pressure whenever this pressure increases this creates a suction force that opposes the filtration of fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule thus decreasing GFR okay now what happens if there is increase in arterial pressure so whenever the arterial pressure increase it leads to increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure so the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is going to increase the so overall arterial pressure increases the hydrostatic pressure at the level of glomerulus and this increase in hydrostatic pressure is then going to favor the filtration of fluid into the Bowman's capsule and thus increasing the GFR okay so there is another condition in which there is increase in afferent arteriolar resistance that is whenever resistance at this point increases now how the resistance at this point can increase it can occur in case of constriction of the afferent arteriole so in case of increase in resistance what is going to happen no doubt that there is increase in back pressure in this area but there is decrease blood flow over here and this leads to decrease in glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure so vasoconstriction over here vasoconstriction at the level of afferent arteriole is going to decrease pressure in this area and this decrease pressure then ultimately leads to decrease in GFR so what are the various conditions that actually causes vasoconstriction over here the uh, the first one is sympathetic stimulation 
Then we have the release of norepinephrine that also causes constriction at the level of the afferent arteriole. And then we have another substance that is called endothelin. Endothelin also causes constriction at the level of afferent arteriole. Okay, what happens if the opposite of this happens? That is, the resistance at the level of afferent arteriole decreases. Then this pressure is going to increase because of increased flow of fluid over here, increased buildup of pressure is going to increase the GFR. So the factors that actually decreases the afferent arteriolar resistance includes the endothelial derived relaxing factor, which is also called as nitric oxide and various prostaglandins. So these prostaglandins are, or the nitric oxide is going to cause vasodilation. Vasodilation will lead to increased flow of fluid into the glomerulus and that, build, that leads to buildup of more pressure at the level of the glomerular capillaries and this increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure then ultimately increases the GFR. So two opposite things happening over here. Okay, let's come to this point, efferent arteriole. So what happens when there is increased efferent arteriolar resistance, when there is constriction at this point? So whenever there is constriction of the efferent arteriole, because the fluid is flowing from here to here. So what is going to happen that because of this constriction, it is going to increase pressure in this area. This increased pressure then leads to increase in glomerular hydrostatic pressure and ultimately increase the GFR. So what are the various substances that leads to efferent arteriolar resistance? The most important one of them is being angiotensin 2. So angiotensin, this efferent arteriole has is very sensitive to angiotensin 2. It has angiotensin 2 receptors. And whenever angiotensin 2 is released in the body, it leads to constriction of the efferent arteriole, buildup of more pressure over here, and increase in GFR. So this is a summary of uh, various physiological and pathophysiological causes that leads to changes in physical determinants of GFR and ultimately affect the glomerular filtration rate. Thank you.